816 on a Thursday. Speaking of time, don't forget we spring forward this Sunday. Sounds pleasant, but with it comes some sleep deprivation for some people and an increase in car crashes, health issues. So with me right now, research chief of pulmonary critical care and sleep medicine, oh so important at UC San Diego, Dr. Atul Mahotra. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Good. You seem a little sleepy this morning. Are you losing some sleep? <laughs> Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good. Um, so, you know, we, we joke about sleep, but it is so important to get eight hours, you know, a night at least. Can we talk about the real health and concerns that come with sleep deprivation? Sure. Uh, sleep deprivation is quite a rampant problem, and the data suggests that people that are short sleepers that sleep less than the recommended uh, time have increased risk of complications. We've reported increased risk of myocardial infarction, that is heart attack. Obesity goes up and other health issues, and so it is a serious concern. Now, what about, I mean, I, I, you run into people sometimes who are like, I don't need sleep, I only sleep four hours a night, and they almost seem proud of it, but really, it's such a huge health scare. Yeah, there are people that think they need less sleep, and certainly there is variation in terms of what is required of people, but very few people, if any, can function on four or five hours of sleep. If you bring those people into the laboratory and study them carefully in terms of their brain function or what we call neurocognitive function, there's almost always abnormalities with sleep deprivation. Oh my goodness. So what is, is there a magic number for sleep that we need? Yeah, it varies with individuals, but we put out a statement a couple of years ago for the American Thoracic Society that recommended between seven and nine hours, because okay. there is some variation, but yeah. less than seven or more than nine really is associated with health consequences. Now with the time change happening this weekend, do you have any tips for how to cope with that? Because I know it hits some people differently. Yeah, it certainly does vary in terms of the impact, but the most important thing to know is that when you spring ahead, that we lose an hour of sleep. And so there's several studies published in the New England Journal of Medicine suggesting that the Monday morning sleep deprivation after daylight savings can have a, a, an issue. So first of all, there's increased risk of motor vehicle accidents on that Monday uh, compared to the week before or the week after, if you look at that. And then there's increased risk of myocardial infarction as well. We think that just little change in sleep that happens with uh, spring ahead uh, can lead to those sorts of consequences. So it's very important that people are aware of these issues and kind of prioritize sleep around this transition. That is crazy to think about. Just a, such a small time change can cause such catastrophic uh, events. Are there tips that you have for how we can sleep better? This is the question we ask every day, right? Yeah, it certainly varies with the individual. Some of us sleep fine and just a matter of setting the alarm an hour later and getting an extra hour of sleep or going to sleep an hour earlier to get that extra hour. Um, and so some of us sleep fine. Other people have a sleep issue where they have insomnia, they have difficulty falling asleep or difficulty staying asleep, or they have a condition like sleep apnea where they have trouble breathing or a lot of snoring when they're asleep. But in those cases, if people think they have a medical condition, it's important they see their doctor. Are there little tips that we could do like, oh, drink milk before bed, wear socks when you sleep, lay on your stomach, I don't know, anything like that? Yeah, a lot of those things uh, vary with the individual, but we generally say avoid alcohol, tobacco, and caffeine uh, around sleep time because those things can uh, disrupt sleep. We think exercise is quite important, but exercise very close to bedtime can disrupt sleep, and so we say exercise in the morning uh, so that uh, you sleep better that night. Oh, good. All of us here on The Morning Show will wake up at midnight to get our workout in before the show. <laughs> Dr. Tool, this is such great advice, you know, because sleep is such important. One of the three pillars of health, what do they say? Diet, exercise, and sleep, sleep, sleep. Yeah, certainly the diet, exercise, and sleep we think of as the three pillars of health. The reason is if you ignore one, the other two will suffer. So I'm fortunate to take care of some professional athletes. They all know that if they don't sleep well, their performance, peak performance is affected by that. And similarly, you know, people that don't sleep enough tend to gain weight. And so diet, exercise, and sleep all interact with one another. If you want to be healthy, you have to do all three. And I'm trying to lose weight myself right now. Sleep is an important component of that. Yeah, and you're a busy man, doctor. We appreciate you taking some time with us this morning. So hopefully you get some sleep this weekend as we spring forward on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you.